Allosaurus. Oh, how the most iconic ones have fallen. It is one of the most famous dinosaurs of all time. Yet, in Battle Titans, it is yet to receive some proper love. Like seriously, without any discussion, in just a few seconds, I can show you how to properly play as an Allosaurus. I'm not trying to piss off the Allosaurus fans, I'm just saying that in Paddle Titans, despite all the updates, combat related or not, the Allosaurus have yet to receive any proper love. Think of it as such as, it's not about the Allosaurus getting weaker, it is about the other creature getting too strong. In my opinion, I think the Allosaurus are lacking behind in terms of abilities. However, despite where my opinion stands, I still have a job to do. In this video, I will teach you how to make the Allosaurus gameplay a little less insufferable. Hopefully these tips will be temporarily because the Allosaurus are definitely in need of an update. If you find something I say disagreeable, then I don't care. If anything, you should agree with me that the Allosaurus need new stuff. In any case, we're going to go over his, hopefully temporarily, arsenal, the subspecies, the terrain compatibility, the fight you can find yourself in, and at the end I'll summarize. Also, do note that this video will be heavily focused on group play as Allosaurus. I'll explain further why in the under the section of fighting style. Despite the arsenal looking like it has a lot, well, your eyes can't deceive you, do not trust them. For head abilities, we have two options. The first one being the standard head bite that does medium damage. The second ability is an actual newer ability called Hatchet Bite, which causes bleed. Despite having the sense slot for a while, we do not have an ability for that yet. The front limb ability is a bitch slap attack that causes periods to anything you hit. You have three options for hide. First one being the resilient scales, that increases bleed and venom healing. Second option, on top scouts that increases armor. Last but not useful, light rail scales that increases speed at the cost of turning speed. There are three options for leg ability. The first one being long distance runner, that decreases your stamina drain. The second one increases your knockback resistance and increases your bone break healing. And the last one attraction that increases your turning speed at the cost of stamina regen. For tail ability, we have two options. We have the standard tail attack that also causes knockback. The second one are Balanced Tail that increases your turning. And you can bet that Allosaurus doesn't have anything on calls yet. As far as head ability goes, I would say that it's actually good to have the standard bite. The hatchet bite kinda just only does bleed. We already have that with the claw attack, so the hatchet bite are kinda unnecessary. It is good to have one damage and one bleed attack, you don't need two. As far as leg ability goes, I would say it kinda depends on what you're fighting. Normally I would yes, go with long distance runner, you know, have as much stamina as you can. On the contrary, having a better turning circle can help you in some situations. For hide, again, it kinda depends on what you're going to fight. If you're going to fight something that hits hard, then I would go for tough scouts. If you're going to fight something that has venom or bleeding power, then I would go for the resilient scales. I don't really have a final answer besides that if you're going to play as a solo allo, you're probably going to die soon anyway. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, again, I would say it depends on what you're planning to fight. If you plan on fighting something big, then I would go for speed allo. Yes, I can hear some of you screaming, but before the updates, speed allo was really good against apexes. You're not gonna win against apexes in a stats to stat battle, so do having speed would definitely help you. You know, cause it's better suited for a hit and run. As far as defense goes, I would say that defense allo are better against smaller things. You're not going to be able to keep up with the smaller stuff in terms of speed, so taking a defense stance would be better, and for that, it would be best to have a defense allo. In this video, I will be utilizing a speed allo. I don't know, I, I just like the design, and apexes was also what I usually hunted before the updates. As far as terrain goes, I'd say that open areas are definitely the areas for Allosaurus. I usually place mid-tiers like Allosaurus in denser areas to fight bigger opponents. 
However, there's something that sets Allosaurus apart from the rest of the mid-tiers. The Allosaurus are one of the larger of the mid-tiers, meaning that it would be a hassle even for them to move in such dense areas. A large open area are definitely the best suited for Allos. It could also probably help to have a bit of elevations. I'm just gonna say it out loud. At the current stage of the Allosaurus, solo play are not the best way to fight creatures. I mean you can try, but prepare to have your day ruined. The Allosaurus are better fitted for a hit and run strategy. However, there are some situations where a more defensive stance would be better. I will try and show example of both situations, but for now, let's see the types of fights. I'm just gonna go out and say it right now. I would not mess with Apexes unless you are with someone. And even then, Apexes are not to be trifled with. If you fight alone, you'll find it more difficult to land a good blow. Having one take the attention while the other gets hits in is a classic and the most easiest strategy, but you can't argue its effectiveness. Of course the Allo stamina aren't infinite, so you need to run away during the fight and recover stamina. These type of fights can last a while, but remember, the more members you have on your team, the higher chance it is for a successful hunt and the faster you may be able to kill your opponent. However, remember what I said that Allosaurus might also experience trouble moving in denser areas. Let's just say, it doesn't matter what type of Apex you're fighting. If these Apex are moving into an area with a lot of foliage and obstructions, then it's usually not worth it trying to keep up the fight. Unfortunately, with the updates, some Apexes have become too tough to defeat even in open areas. Take the Spinosaurus for example. It might not have as much damage output as the Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, Spinos now have defense abilities that can make it difficult to land a good blow on him. These types of fights can go two ways. One is that he lands successful hits and slowly but surely chips away your health over time. The other one being that he lands a solid hit. Seriously, that stomp is so OP and I have no problems with it. I'm a bigger Spino fan than I am an Allo fan. Among the mid tiers, you do have one of the highest stats. Which means that you'll also probably be one of the slower of the mid tiers, with the exception of the DASP. So if you are going to fight other mid-tiers, it would be good to get the bleed in, after which just force them to move so you can do damage over time. You can also try to force them into a head-to-head -head battle, where you most likely will have the advantage. However, that means you'll have to force them into a position where they have no stamp, and you'll most likely not be able to outstamp them. It's just the reality of being one of the stronger mid-tiers. Instead of running after them, you should get them to come to you. Force them into a head-to-head -head battle. It is waste of stat to try and chase them, most of the time. If there's multiple mid-tiers, unless you're alone, then just target one, and hopefully you'll be able to kill them before they kill you. Getting bleed into your enemies are crucial. That way you can be sure that your enemy are getting damaged even when you're not attacking them directly. Just like against mid tiers that has lower stats than you, against low tiers you will have the advantage in a head to head fight. Low tiers are usually faster or have more maneuverability. What you need to do is just take a defensive stance, try to predict their movement, and then force them into your attacks. In this case, having a few obstructions in your area could work in your favor. However, these are one of the only situations where they can work in your favor.
one mid tier should be easy enough. Against small, it will be easier to deal with them if you are in a group. Against the raptors, just get your friend to help out. When the raptor pounce a creature, there's a chance that they take damage on impact. If they are unlucky enough to do that, then killing them off your friends shouldn't be too hard. However, if you are alone, I would just walk into a, the nearest body of water and then walk to the area where they can't reach the bottom. Just make them waste a lot of stamina, and when they jump off, they'll fall into the water and then it will be easier for you to pick them off. Yes, there's the possibility of semi-aquatics, but hey, what do you want to die to? The raptors or a crocodile? Your choice. In any case, against Apexes, try to do a hit and run. Only attack Apexes if you're in a group. If you're not in a group, well, you can try. I hope you like regrowing creatures. Try to fight them in open areas, as you too can have trouble with uh, too much hindrances. Do the usual one distracting and the other one attacking strategy. And also watch out for any counter attacks. Against mid tiers, you have to force them into a head to head fight, as you usually have the advantage in terms of stats. Try to use the environment to limit their movement and then bite them when you see the chance. Against low tiers, just do the same. Take a defensive stance, try to predict their movement, use the environment to hindrance their movement if you need to, and that's about it. Try to group up without allos as it's easier to deal with pouncers. And if you don't find any friends to play with, if they are latched onto you, go to a body of water and then go to where it's deep enough where they can reach the bottom, and when they jump off of you and are in swimming animation, then it should be pretty easy for you to just bite them to death. To be honest, I kinda feel like I owe you guys an apology. I kinda did half-ass this uh, video. And it's probably due to because uh, that the Allo doesn't have too much going on for him. I am sure that once the Allosaurus does get updated, then it'll be a bit more fun to play as Allosaurus and, well, <laughs> I'm gonna stop speaking ill of the Allosaurus for now and for, uh, if you like this video you know what to do and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!